Hey, OBCC family and friends, we're here again. It's 12 noon on Thursday, if you need to be reminded of the day of the week. And today would be April 9th, I believe. So we're here, it's day four of our Devo, our Living Hope Devo series that we're doing leading up to Easter Sunday and, and just in this Passion Week. It's one of our connect points, so glad to be able to do this again. While you're jumping on and before we get started, just a, an apology for technical difficulty yesterday. The one assignment I had was to set up the phone and obviously it came out sideways. So it, we apologize. I am technically challenged and couldn't even do my one small part, but we made it. Cass did a great job yesterday. I'm thankful for her and for Sarah the day before, just the chance to look at this passage together from different vantage points. And so we made it through yesterday, ready to jump in today. We're going to look again at 1 Peter chapter 1 and just reading these first three verses. And we'll pray before we start. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be together today. We thank you for your word that is living and active. In a season like this, your word comes to us and hits home in our hearts. And so we thank you for the opportunity to be in your word together. And we thank you for the truth of Jesus Christ being the foundation for our living hope as we touch on that again today. Help us, Holy Spirit, in your name. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. We're going to stop right there. I want to read that a few more times. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Today we're going to just talk a little bit about heaven. And, and I want to ask you, when is the last time you had a, 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 an in-depth or at least a, a longer conversation than just a, a passing uh, comment about heaven. When's the last time you just spent some time thinking about heaven? And, and there, there's something here in this text as we talk about the living hope that is tied to heaven. And those two things work in combination. They work in tandem. And it brings us right back even to our challenge for this year and our theme from the book of Colossians in chapter 3, it says, set your hearts on things above. That's heaven. Set your mind or your affection on things above. That, that reminder that we are to do that. And what better time than right now with all that we're going through to just take some time to think about heaven. It's not wrong to do it. I think I can say this compared to heaven, earth and all that happens here is overrated and it can bring joy to our hearts, excitement to our hearts, when we truly think about heaven. I want to read a quote from Rick Warren. This comes from his book, a Purpose Driven Life. But just get a hold of this for a moment. You will not be in heaven two seconds before you cry out, why did I place so much importance on things that were so temporary? You will not be in heaven two seconds before you cry out, why did I place so much importance on things that were so temporary? So I, I want us to just think about heaven together for a few moments. And whatever we do in these moments, and whatever you do in your own time thinking on heaven, whatever we do on this side of heaven, at best, it's a sneak preview. We, we, there's so much more on the other side. But to stop 
to think on, to meditate, to look at God's word and his promises that, that help us get a glimpse into heaven, it's worth it. And it's only at best a sneak preview. But just as we think about this, what excites us about heaven? What is true about heaven? What, what can we grab onto in these days when we could be worrying and thinking about so many other earthly things? When we stop to think about heaven right here in this text, it says our inheritance is, stir, it is stored up for us in heaven. It's kept for us in heaven. The very thing that Cassidy encouraged us with yesterday as we think on the inheritance we have in Christ and all that is waiting for us, it, it, it's stored up. It's waiting for us in heaven. That gives us reason to want to go there in our thoughts. It gives us reason to, to think on those things. In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Paul writes uh, just as he is beginning his letter and and he just says praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing that whole idea of inheritance of the spiritual blessings that's where we know that we have all that that Christ has provided for us so our inheritance is stored up there that's one reason we need to meditate on, on that, think on that, dwell on that. But let me give you some other reasons, and, and these next few are just from Jesus himself. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, we read a, a profound statement. Jesus has instructed a group of disciples, of Christ followers, to go out. This time it wasn't just the 12, it was 72 of them, and they went out and they bore witness and they, they, they walked in the power that Jesus had given them to cast out demons and to heal the sick and to preach the gospel. And, and they come back and they're full of joy and excitement and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And then Jesus replies, and in verse 20, he says this. He says, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Can, can we just, even in this time, in these few moments, just to know right now, as we deal with daily life, as we go through what we're going through here and being in lockdown, in a sense, in our homes and wondering about maybe so many other things related to that with our work or sickness or any other kinds of things in the midst of all that to just stop and say my name is written in heaven no matter what happens when it happens how it happens on this earth my name is written in heaven and Jesus says more than anything you see happen even in my name rejoice that your name is written in heaven if you are a follower of Jesus Christ if you've received Christ as your savior today your name's written there and every time we want to worry or fret or wonder what the future holds, we just know that our name is, is written there. But, but I, I want to give us some other reasons to be excited about heaven today. And, and I'm going to jump to Philippians, and then I'll come back to what Jesus said in another text. But in, in Philippians chapter 3, there's reminder as well, and it gives us reason to think on heaven. In Philippians 3, beginning with verse 18, it says, For as I have often told you, and this is Paul speaking, For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship in is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Wow, if, if we just think a little bit about heaven today, our name is written there. Our inheritance is stored up there. And our citizenship is there. More than we are a citizen of the U.S. or if you're listening from somewhere else, a citizen of, of some other country, more than that, our citizenship is in heaven. We, we anticipate going there. And we have a citizenship in heaven. And in and, and that add-on of just right now we struggle with our lowly bodies, this body of flesh and all that we go through. Paul, Paul says that, that daily this flesh is dying, but there is an eternal weight of glory that outweighs it all because we know that our bodies will be changed our bodies will be renewed we'll receive a heavenly body and all of that is tied in because that's our home where heaven is our home that's where our citizenship is i hope you get as excited as i am right now i might stand up and start preaching but let's go back to what jesus said a, a fourth thing that we find that excites us about heaven in john chapter 14 John chapter 14, and I'm just going to say this, uh, I have been spending some time on this because of the practice of this affection reset, set your mind on things above. I've just started collecting a little stack of books from my shelves, haven't ordered any new ones, but just books about heaven and beginning to reflect on that, even devotionally or, or other readings, and, and especially as we look at the word so there may be a series coming on heaven uh, one of these days or, or sometime here in, in this year when we get back together again. But a fourth thing, Philippians, uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 14. John 14, Jesus speaking. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Let's just thank God that, that he knew that this earth would bring us trouble and and concern and worry. But he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare, prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So often we, we just come to this text at a funeral or a, a time of loss of a loved one that, that has, has gone to heaven. But we ought to think on this regularly. Jesus went from this earth to prepare a place for us. And as followers of Jesus, we can say we have a home there. Our name is written there. We have an inheritance stored up for us there. We are citizens of heaven. And even adding to that now, we say we have a home there. Some translations say, uh, in, in my father's house are many mansions. Go ahead and dream and think about that. However you're living in this space on earth, in your heart, you can just say, God's making a room, a special room, a mansion, a place for me. And, and that's not just... Uh, a flippant statement, that's, that's reality. I, I thought about this in preparation for this time. And a lot of us live in homes or apartments or condos or we're in a townhouse here. And, and a goal, especially in our American culture, is to own our own home and to get it paid off. And we work to doing that. Can I just tell you today, no matter what your living condition is right now, if you're renting, if you are in debt and you're paying on a 30-year mortgage, a 15-year mortgage, or whatever. Can I just tell you today that you have a home in heaven and it's fully paid for? It's fully paid for. It's not, it's not a home that you have to pay on monthly. It's not something you have to do to hopefully earn it. But if you are a follower of Jesus Christ right now in heaven, he's prepared a room, let's say a mansion for you, and, and it's far beyond anything we could even think or imagine. And it's good to just think a little bit about heaven. 
So our inheritance is stored up there. Our name is written there. We're a citizen of heaven. We have a home there. And just to bring it back down to earth, as we finish, I, who would have thought that I'll jump back into the book of Colossians? But there's a tie between hope and heaven, and there's a tie between how we live on this earth because we are thinking about heaven. And here's what, what Paul writes there in Colossians, starting in verse 3 of chapter 1. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ and of your love and of the love you have for all of God's people. And listen to this, the faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven. Could it be that knowing, meditating on, in faith, appropriating that, that we have a hope waiting for us in heaven. We have the hope of heaven. And because of that hope of heaven, our faith, our love for one another, our faith in God and our love for one another is, is appropriated differently right, how, right now as we live on this earth. The more we realize how great heaven is going to be, we want everyone to be there. And not everyone's going to be there. Only those that have received what Christ has provided as the living hope, as Jesus died and rose again and provides salvation for us, we've got a message to tell. We've got a gospel to preach. And the more I think about how great heaven will be and the hope that is awaiting me, that I want everyone to join me in that. And that encourages my faith. And it helps me to love you, my brothers and sisters, because as I love you, as I, as I fix my hope on heaven and realize how awesome that's going to be, we on this earth together can, can walk in a love for one another that, that God has graced us with. And it all ties in. It all ties in. That hope that we have in heaven brings us back down to earth. C.S. Lewis, and I'm not sure I have this quote exactly right, but throughout the years I've never forgotten this. C.S. Lewis said this, those that think the most about the next world will make the greatest impact in this world. Those that think the most about the next world, about heaven, will make the greatest impact in this world. And so may God help us to think a little bit about heaven. In these days, when you've got some spare moments, go there. I, I, I've listed four or five things here I, I, the homework is for you to add to the list. What, what do you think about when you think about heaven? What do you hold on to? Where does your heart go? Set your mind on things above and watch what God will do to encourage you, to strengthen you, to keep you, to empower you to live as he would have you to live. So that's your homework. You add to this list. I just got us started. We may talk about it again somewhere down the road, but let's be encouraged by the promise of heaven, the hope we have in Christ and the inheritance stored up for us in heaven. Father, I pray that your word would come alive in our hearts. Even as we think and, and talk about heaven, it, it's, it, it, it's seen through a glass darkly. It, it's such a small reality of what really is heaven beyond what we could even think or imagine. May, may we go there in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our prayers, and may it light a fire in us like never before as we serve you. Bless each one that's listening. We pray for those today that are sick in body. May you heal and restore. We pray for those that are in fear today. May you encourage. We pray that you'll keep us strong in your grace and in your strength. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for the hope of heaven. In your name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. Remember, tomorrow is the fifth of this week of Devos, all on this truth of the living hope. And tomorrow will be special. It's Good Friday, so we're going to do a 12 noon 
version of a Good Friday service with live worship and the word. You'll want to be here. So we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Think on heaven.